الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية 
تسقى من عين آنية ليس له طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبن كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمصيتر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حميده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم جعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون 
يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We declare His greatness, we declare His oneness We thank Him for the many blessings that He sent to us Amongst them this beautiful month of Ramadan And amongst those many blessings the sending of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a mercy to the worlds. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to send His peace and blessings upon him, the Prophets and Messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him and those that follow in his blessed path until the Day of Judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma Ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَٰلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say in the bounty of Allah, and in His mercy, in this guidance that He has sent, not just the text, but the context, not just something that is abstract, but something that is so beautifully manifest in the person of the Prophet ﷺ. In this guidance that fills a void in the heart that cannot be filled with anything else, let them find joy in that. And that is better than what anyone else can compile. That is better than al-hakum takathur those that are destroyed by the pursuit of quantity. That guidance that fills the heart, that guidance that gives you a sense of purpose, that guidance that gives you a sense of clarity. And whoever has clarity has joy, has happiness. And subhanAllah, what I want to speak about in these few minutes that we have today is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mandates joy. When Allah commands you, to have joy. What does that even mean? On this day right now, it would be haram for you to fast. It would be prohibited for you to fast on this day or on the other Eid. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said these are days of joy, celebration, feasting. These are days where we are to celebrate the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. This is not a day of fasting. If there is any good in it, then the Prophet ﷺ, who loved his ibadah more than anyone else or anything else, he would have fasted sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a form of coming close to Allah, but he did not do so alayhi salatu wa salam. The same Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and the companions who were in the masjid with their tents pitched for 10 consecutive nights, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their eyes bloodshot. As soon as the day of Eid came, suddenly in that same masjid, you had the Abyssinians doing war dances. You had the children running around and playing and singing. And this was not a cognitive dissonance. In fact, because they found their joy and they found their fulfillment from the same source, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these were not a people that turned the page of obedience into disobedience. These were a people that found joy in their salah and found joy in their celebration. And connected it all back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understood that Allah gives us these things for our own good. When Allah commands happiness, some of the brothers and sisters would say, how can we celebrate Eid knowing what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine or in Afghanistan? How can we celebrate Eid? How can we smile? How can we find joy and laughter? You know what? Allah never canceled Eid. The Prophet ﷺ never canceled Eid. At what year in the life of the Messenger ﷺ did they not bury shuhada? Did they not bury martyrs? When were they between Badr and Uhud and Khandaq and everything in between? What year did they not have widows and people that suffered great catastrophes? What year did the Prophet ﷺ not lose one of his own family members? But they never canceled Eid, no matter what happens. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we need this sometimes. We need that joy. And it's not sinful to be happy. Sometimes it is necessary because you can be happy without being heedless. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Abdullah ibn al-Harith radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, ma ra'aytu ahadan qat, I never saw anyone in my life akthara tabassuman min Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who smiled more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want you to think about that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam carried the hem, carried the burden of his ummah more than anyone else. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam suffered when anyone suffered. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could hear the complaining of the animals. Still the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam buried his children. Still he smiled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam suffered from such extreme poverty that he had to tie a stone to his stomach. Still he smiled sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Still when Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to come home. He did not come home sad. He didn't come home bringing the hem, bringing the, the, the stress that he had on the outside into his house. She said, she said radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Prophet وسلم, used to be full of laughter when he came home, always making jokes, always bringing joy to the house. He didn't bring a heavy presence to the house. He brought a, an uplifting presence to the house sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he had that balance alayhi salatu wa salam. He understood that. When Umm Atiyah radiallahu ta'ala anha says that in a culture where we used to mourn our dead, for months and years, anniversaries every month after someone passes away, anniversaries every single year after someone passes away, the types of practices that signify death and mourning. Rasulullah prohibited us from mourning our dead ones more than three days, except for a widow for her husband, four months and 10 days. That doesn't mean that you don't feel sadness after that. But Allah and the Messenger understand that you need to move forward, not move on. You don't move on from Ramadan, you move forward with Ramadan. You don't suddenly move on from those nights of tawbah that you just had, those nights of repentance, and say all of that is done. You move forward with it. And when you bury a loved one, or you bid farewell to someone that you love, you move forward, not on from them. Forward with them. You carry the lesson. You carry a new unlocked level of taqwa and reverence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have joy. You have joy. Allah commands it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to thank Him. And subhanAllah, the equivalent of Eid to Ramadan, dear brothers and sisters, is when you finish your salah. And when you finish your salah, the first thing you do is you say, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Ya Rabb, forgive us. Forgive us for our deficiency in this prayer. But then you say, Allahumma anta salam Wa minka salam Tabarakta ya dal jalali wal ikram. Oh Allah, you are peace. You are peace. And from you is peace. From you is peace. As if to say that SubhanAllah, the peace that I just found in this prayer, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, peace to everyone that is to my right, and peace to everyone and everything that is to my left. Allahumma anta salam. I'm full of a sense of salam from you now, Ya Allah. There is something that came through this prayer. Likewise, when it comes to Hajj. There is a celebration after the day of Arafah. Can you imagine the tears of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions on the day of Arafah? The most sinful of people when they go on the day of Arafah will find a way to cry. Can you imagine the Prophet ﷺ and his companions on the day of Arafah? But once they move forward, they said the same thing that we say today. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. They praise him and they thank him. And they say, Alhamdulillah, for these moments of joy. Dear brothers and sisters, we have a deen that gives us optimism, a religion that teaches us to be joyful, to be happy, not heedless, to be grateful, not greedy, to see the best of everything in every situation that is put in front of us, and to be able to say, Alhamdulillah, in every single situation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even exempt did not even exempt our relationship with Him. Allah Azza wa Jal did not make it so that we would be crying on the day of Eid and wondering if our Ramadan was accepted. From the moment that the Shawwal Hilal came in, you transform that istighfar, that seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into a moment of gratitude and joy. And we say, Ya Allah, we call upon you with certainty that you have accepted our Ramadan. Bidnillahi ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ said, Udu Allah wa antum bil ijaba. Call upon Allah certain in your dua. Ya Allah, as your Prophet told, told us to call upon you with certainty, Ya Allah, it is not our audacity, it is our trust in your mercy. Ya Allah, we call upon you with certainty bi ta'ala. Ya Allah, accept our Ramadan. 
Ya Allah, accept our Laylatul Qadr. Ya Allah, accept our Qiyam. Ya Allah, accept our Siyam. Ya Allah, accept our Tilawatul Quran. Ya Allah, accept our Sadaqat. Accept our Dua. Accept all of it, Ya Allah, and we call upon you with certainty, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Ya Allah, as you've given us the joy of coming together in this masjid, and the joy of coming together on Eid, and the joy of celebrating with one another an act of worship, Ya Allah, gather us all in Al Firdaus Al A'la where we can have the true Eid with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al Firdaus Al A'la, that true celebration where we are invoking you and saying Alhamdulillah while we are staring at you, Ya Allah, and you are pleased with us. Allah Murda'anna. Oh Allah, be pleased with us. Oh Allah, be pleased with us. Oh Allah, be pleased with us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for any shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring joy to our hearts, joy to our families, joy to our community. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as much as we taste this joy, that we want to share that joy with everyone that is around us. Whether that means uplifting someone who is downtrodden, or that means spending upon one in poverty, or that means sharing the message of La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah with those who are spiritual seekers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put joy in our hearts and bring joy to others through us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide through us. Allahumma ameen. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhta'na. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala ladhina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. واعف عنا واغفر لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم آمين Dear brothers and sisters, Eid Mubarak to all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and accept from you. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.